Hello everyone, welcome to the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. Hi Sammy. Hi buddy. Hi there. Everybody loves seeing, seeing you and saying hi. Let's go over here, okay? Hi everyone. Welcome to the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. My name is Lisa, and this is a space where I talk about all of my knitting projects, my knitting successes, my knitting fails, and everything in between. I also share a lot of my spinning, my hand spinning. I use mainly a drop spindle, and I also share a lot about natural dyeing, as I will do some today. So let's see, I think this is episode 73. Today is Tuesday, March 28th. I cannot believe it is the end of March already. It seems like this month has gone by so quickly. I think the last time I recorded a podcast, I feel like we were still very early in March, and that's probably because we were. It's been a couple of weeks. Um, For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you will know that my son Owen was very sick last week. He missed an entire week of school with 103 plus degree fever that we just couldn't break. It just, it would go away for a couple hours and then come right back up again. And I did that all week long for like five full days. So I wasn't able to record a podcast last week, but I am finally ready today and I cannot wait to share all of the things with you. So the elephant in the room, what am I wearing today? Finally. Today, I am finally wearing my Feel the Burn sweater by Caitlin Hunter. If you have been following my last couple of podcast episodes, you will already know what a process it has been to get to this point of me finally being able to wear a sweater that I am 100% happy with. And let me tell you, it was 100% worth the struggle. So, yes, first of all, the yarn that I use to knit my sweater is my own naturally dyed yarn. I dyed all of this yarn with black walnuts that I foraged for myself from a location actually very close to Owen's theater rehearsals. And I foraged the walnuts from the ground and it was amazing. Just one day when he was in theater, I was over in the location to do some spinning and I got clonked on the head with a black walnut. And I looked up and I said, it's black walnut season. (laughs) And I looked over the ground and there were a whole bunch of black walnuts, like tons and tons and tons. So I collected a whole bunch of them and I got to work dyeing yarn with black walnuts. You guys might have remembered my hands turned a very dark shade of brown that did not go away for like almost two months. Even though I wore rubber gloves and yeah, the the gloves protected a bit, but it still seeped through the gloves and my hands were brown for a very long time. (laughs) So that was fun to deal with. But yeah, I wanna say that that was back in September, maybe October that I died. I wanna say September, maybe even August. It was was like right around, let's just go with September, (laughs) is when I collected all of the walnuts. So I spent several weeks processing the walnuts and dyeing the yarn. The yarn in its original state is this, off-white cream color. This is the undyed version. And then um, I had a ton of black walnuts. So black walnuts is one of the only materials that really gives you a very, very rich brown right off the bat. And so this medium brown right outside the white right here, that's the, uh, the main color of the sweater, is the 
main shade of brown that I was getting from these black walnuts. The exhaust bath, this lighter brown over here, this lighter brown was the exhaust bath from this medium brown so the exhaust bath is when you have you still have some color left in your dye pot not enough to give you some very rich shade of brown like this but enough where you don't want to waste it like you can still absolutely get color from the yarn and when you pair the lighter exhaust shades with other shades you just you just get a gorgeous color palette um, and then this very dark brown so the the darkest brown was the medium brown and then what I did was I altered the brown to a darker shade by placing the yarn for a very short period of time in an iron water after bath. So iron is a natural modifier, color modifier, that you can use to satin brighter colors. And in this case, it saddened the brown to this gorgeous, gorgeous deep brown that is really only possible to get in natural dyeing with the addition of an iron modifier. So I had this beautiful palette of browns to work with. Some of these browns will be available in my shop, which I keep telling you guys about, but really stay tuned because I am getting close. Almost all the yarn has been listed now. And yeah, if you guys are interested in getting your hands on some of my naturally dyed yarn, click that notification button so that you don't miss when I do finally launch my shop because it is coming probably in a couple months. So I would like to have it going this spring. Um, and I'm actually, I'm getting very, very close now. So I've been saying this for a long time, but we are, we are approaching the finish line <laughs> finally. So I knew right away the Feel the Burn sweater was in like the top 10 patterns in my queue to knit ever since um, you know several years ago when the Bernie Sanders mittens meme went viral and that was a lot of fun and so Caitlin Hunter created this free pattern for knitters and the idea was that she just she didn't have anybody test knit the pattern or tech edit it or anything like that she basically took a lot of the numbers I think from her Sadultna crop because her design was a short sleeved cropped sweater basically the same as her Sadultna crop so many of you should be familiar with that pattern um, but because this is a worsted weight yarn and I live in New York on Long Island where it is very, very cold most of the time, although this winter has been kind of like crazy up and down, um, I just kind of felt like the short sleeves weren't going to be nearly so practical for me. And so I then, I had already knit the body to the cropped length and I decided I wanted the sleeves long. So then I, it sat for a long time while I kind of made this decision and was busy with a lot of other things. And then, oh wait, by the way, you guys can see I've got my, um, I've got my Bernie Mitten earrings on. I got these from an Etsy shop called Oceans of Clay. So they're polymer clay mittens. I don't know if he still makes them or not, but just wanted to not forget to mention my Bernie mittens. Um, but when I saw all the different shades of brown that I got, I, I knew I had to knit this sweater. So I knit the cropped version and I hesitated on the sleeves for a few months. And then I finally decided to knit the long sleeves, but I didn't have any kind of pattern that like numbers to base it off on. So I just kind of, thought that I wanted fitted sleeves. And so the first time I knit the sleeves, cause now we're on time two and a half, three of knitting the sleeves for the sweater. The first time I knit them too short and also I tapered them and they were too tight. So I decided that that wasn't going to be comfortable for me. So I ripped them out and then 
I re-knit them again and what I did the second time was I did not do any of the tapering I did not do any decreases I just I, I think I picked up like four stitches under the arms so that whatever stitch count I was at I think I knit the size three so that I was gonna have an even 60 stitches for the sleeve and 60 stitches was a great number because the chart pattern repeat was a six stitch pattern repeat so then without doing any decreases at all I still had the perfect stitch count to just go on and do the color work so I did that except when I was done with it the sleeves were too short they were more like bracelet like this length which is not how I like my sleeves so they were about this length um, and I also didn't like the cropped body because I'm 44 years old I've had a kid and my weight fluctuates and I just the, the cropped look just wasn't flattering on me. I also have a very, very short torso. My cat is meowing, sorry. I have a very, very short torso, and so basically how cropped that sweater was, it felt like it was ending right under my boobs. So then I decided to lengthen the sweater. And I lengthened it too much, and then the way what I had done was... Um, she also had this color work here at the bottom of the body so I had lengthened it and also added the sleeve color work to the bottom of the body but it was not flattering just my hips kind of go like this and the color work kind of hugged my tummy a little bit and it and the sleeves are too short it just wasn't flattering on me at all so I wanted to try again I was determined to make this sweater work out because it's my naturally dyed yarn and I just, I had this vision of how perfect these walnut shades were for my, for show, showcasing my yarn in this sweater and I loved it. Like it was beautiful, the yoke is beautiful, the colors are so beautiful. It just, the fit of the sweater was not a success for me so instead of just being frustrated and calling it done I persisted you guys I cut my sweater for the very first time I got my scissors out well that's not the first thing I did first thing I did was I put waste yarn in. I'm gonna insert some pictures because I did take pictures of the process so that I could document it uh, because I didn't want to really film it. I just wanted to focus on doing it for the first time, not also filming. So I took pictures. I inserted waste yarn into like a little bit above the color work and I left one, maybe two rows in between and then inserted another round of waste yarn because I wasn't sure yet at that point whether I wanted to try to preserve the color work and just take a, out a little bit of the excess length that I had done or if I was going to just take out the color work altogether of the body which is what I ended up doing so let me just adjust here so as you can see I I took out the color work so I probably had ripped it back I had cut off probably from about this point and then so I cut it and then I knit a few more inches of this brown back on because I was taking away the color work but I still needed to add some of that length but let me just back up a little bit it was this long before and I wanted it to hit kind of right at my hip right there so I took away a few inches but I had to also then replace some of that with just solid brown and then what I decided to do to make the hem a little bit more interesting was I knit just the dark brown portion of the color work there before going into the hem and then I grafted it back together now I didn't graft this back together that's the sleeves I am a mess today I am all over the place but 
yeah, so I knit the hem of the sweater. I just re-knit all of that. I didn't have to graph the color work back on because I just decided to eliminate that altogether. <sighs> okay, so then <laughs> I got really happy with the body length. I tried that on. I was like, yes, this is going to work much better. So then I had a body length that was perfect. And I had sleeves that were too short. So then I did the same thing with the sleeves and you can't even, you can't even really tell. Like I cut off from a few rows above the color work. And then I want to say I ended up adding about four inches. That's how short these were because I like my sleeves a little bit long. So you can see that the length that I have now is right where I happen to really like it, which is kind of right about to that first knuckle of my thumb there so that I can just grab my sleeves like this. This is how I, this is how I do sleeves, <laughs> but my sleeve originally was about here. So, um, yeah, I kept actually trying it on. I, I had preserved the color work. I did not re-knit this. I cut it off. And again, I did two rows of waste yarn and snipped in between and then unraveled. And I knit an extra, I want to say, four inches to get everything. I mean, that's significant difference in the sleeve length. Um, and I measured the ideal length, which was around 15 inches of the brown from the underarm before doing the color work. And then when I thought I was getting close, I would kind of slip the color work part back onto my wrist and um, kind of estimate, like, was I ready to graft them together yet? And yeah, so then I grafted it with Kitchener Stitch. And then I did the same thing to the other sleeve, and now I have a sweater that I love. I am so happy. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> this was such a process. This sweater, like I have, I don't think I've ever gone to this much trouble to make a sweater right for me. Usually I'm just, I'm done with it. Usually it's, it's either close enough or I haven't really had this amount of struggles getting a sweater to fit before. It was so, it was so much fun cutting the color work off and re adding length and grafting it back together. There was something just so exciting about that. Um, I was a little nervous because I had never done it before, but I had watched other people record their process of doing it frequently enough that I didn't even have to look up in that moment how to do it. I just, I knew what needed to be done and I did it. And I'm just, I'm so happy that I persisted and that I did it. And I think it looks great. So let me, um, I'm just gonna move my chair out of the way a little bit so we can see how it is fitting now. So I'm hoping that my husband is going to meet me at, um, at Owen's Theater Place. Actually, I want to do some pictures where I got the walnuts from today while Owen is at theater. So I'm hoping my husband will meet me there to do the, the pictures. But you can see I've, it, this falls now maybe two inches below my mid-rise waistband. And it is no longer hugging like this part of me. If I just let my stomach go, it was kind of doing that before. And now it's just, it's sitting at the perfect length. I really, really like it. And then see if I can get up here a little bit more. Hopefully I'll have pictures, but um, yeah. So you can see now the length, like the sleeves before were kind of like this. <laughs> except the body was a little longer. So they were kind of like that. But now, ah, it's so much better. So I don't know, hopefully I'll get some actual pictures to insert that will show it off much better than what I just tried to do. But I could not be happier. And it's done. And that means that this was my 
my third finished sweater, I think, of the year. I had the test in it, and then I had my artist journey that I finished like in the last maybe two podcast episodes ago. That was a really long one. And um, this is the third sweater that I have finished since the new year. So this counts as project number either six or seven. I have to go back and count of my knit 23 and 23. So let's revisit that. I feel like I haven't mentioned that for a little while. My goal in 2023 is to finish knitting 23 items. I don't have to start them this year. I just have to finish them this year. So I have been working through my lingering whips list to finally get some long standing whips off of that list permanently so that I can wear them. And that has been feeling really, really great. Um, I've been doing some smaller projects. I've got a couple, well, I've got one thing to show you guys for finished objects that you guys have not seen before, but that was another quick little project that I did. So I think this is either number six or seven. I, I have to go back and check. So at least if it's number six, I am right on track for knitting and finishing at least two things per month. Because if I finish two items per month on average, that puts me at 24, which exceeds 23 by just one. So there's a little wiggle room in there, but I'm right on track to meet that goal. Oh my gosh. So um, I do have a Ravelry group, Stop Dropping It podcast. So if you guys want to join me in knitting 23 items in 2023, it's not too late. Just go over there and post your projects. And yeah, we're just, we're going to finish 23 things in 2023. Okay, so I have to check the time. I'm not going to be able to record this entire podcast in one go. I have to get Owen. I was like, he was sick all last week. And so I didn't have a chance to record. And then just getting back into the routine, like yesterday, I didn't, and I didn't, I just didn't know. I just wasn't really feeling ready to record. And then of course today I'm finally like, I feel ready to record and I finally got myself all ready and I knew I wasn't going to have time to film the entire podcast. So we're going to do this in segments, but I really wanted to show you guys the sweater when I still had the daylight because probably most of the rest of things are going to be filmed later this evening after Owen is in bed. So yeah, I'm going to check the time, but we are going to move on to finished objects. So this is really my first finished object, but I do have another one to show you. So let's move on into that segment. Okay, so I have a little bit of time to keep going, so I'm going to do my finished objects. So. The very first thing I'm going to show you, I started knitting the weekend just before Owen got sick because on Friday, my husband got an email from Owen's school that upcoming on Tuesday, the following Tuesday, was going to be Rock Your Socks Day. And so I said, Rock Your Socks Day? Well, my kid just outgrew the majority of his hand knit socks and he currently only has like two pairs that still fit. So it's been on my list to make Owen some more socks. And so Rock Your Sock Day was the perfect excuse to do a quick cast on and knit another pair of socks for Owen. Of course, Monday he got his fever and so he never actually went to school for Rock Your Socks Day. And so then I didn't finish them by Tuesday because he was sick. So I had like one and a half done. But I got them done a couple of days later. And I'm going to briefly show these because let me tell you, when Owen put <laughs> these socks on, he wanted them right away. And he didn't take them off for three days. And yes, usually he showers more than that, but he was sick. He had a 103 degree fever for like five days. And so 
he wasn't having it. When he finally took a shower on Sunday, it was like, oh my gosh, finally my kid was clean again. It's like, you know, when you're sick and you sweat and you have a fever and you're just gross, I could not get him to take a shower. He was not having it. He was just on the couch resting and sleeping and taking medicine and drinking fluids and trying to eat and so anyway these socks went on his feet and three days later they finally came off when he finally took a shower <laughs> so now they're dirty they're they're quite dirty so i'm going to insert pictures of what they looked like when i first put them on his feet but i did want to show you them really quickly before i washed them so hopefully you can't see the layers of dirt and pilling already on the heels but look at these fun socks so this yarn i got at nitty city in 2012. that's right this yarn has been sitting in my stash for 11 years 11 years. Isn't that crazy? So Ellen's favorite colors are orange and blue, stemming from several years ago when he was obsessed with Blippi when he was younger. But the colors have stick. He is no longer obsessed with Blippi. I think he finally thinks Blippi is for babies. Blippi's, you know, Blippi is Blippi. <laughs> you guys might know who Blippi is and you might not, but that's where the orange and blue combination like originally stems from. So I just randomly grabbed like the way that I have my yarn in my yarn closet. Maybe I'll show you guys one day what my yarn closet looks like. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see my yarn closet. Um, but the way I have it, it's like I have a lot of sock yarn, so it's all really packed in there. So I was just kind of looking at the skeins and I saw one that had a lot of blue and orange. And it looked like this and I said that looks like a fun one and I pulled it out and I was astounded that it was not knitterly things because almost all of my sock yarn is self-striping knitterly things yarn this is Madeline Tosh it's Tosh sock and it's a hundred percent superwash there's no nylon in this whatsoever um, and so I decided to knit the contrasting heels and toes so i had the blue left over so i just went and dug, and dug into my leftover stash to see what i had first this blue was actually left over from um arnie and carlos socks that i had knit for owen a couple of years ago and he had smaller feet then so there was a bunch of the plain blue for the like heel and cuff portion of the sock um, left over. So I was able to use that for both, uh, for both the heels and toes. And then the orange is actually Knitterly Things. The orange is a Knitterly Things mini skein that came with a different pair of sock yarn and I hadn't used it yet. And so I just pulled it for these pair of socks. And so I made him these socks and now I'm gonna wash them. But they're actually a little bit big on him, which is fine. Um, I made them a little bit long because his feet have been growing like crazy. And he doesn't usually wear his hand knit socks to school so much, mostly because my husband gives him his clothes in the morning and he just grabs his boring white and boring black socks. Whenever I pull his clothes for the morning, I pull the fun socks. I mean, yeah, so he mostly wears boring white and boring black socks because that's, that's just what he does because of my husband. But let me tell you, he loves his hand knit socks. He told me that these are now his favorite socks and he likes them even better than self-striping socks. He thought it was super fun. And so I think the colorway for the Madeline Tosh yarn was called Warmth. And, you know, I had no idea how it was gonna knit up. It did its its pooling thing. The, I just threw these, but let me, 
Let me hold this up a little closer. The yarn looks like, it looks like how they dyed this was they made it like orange and blue. And you can even see underneath the purple, like there's still that orange and blue. That's my alarm to get Owen. Hang on. We're gonna have to continue all the rest of this later, but can you guys see how the orange and blue peeks through the purple there? And so then they like over dyed parts of the skein with purple. And so it does this swirly thing. You might get really thin stripes, like when I had a bigger stitch count in the gusset, those sections were less like big. They were thinner and oh, they're so dirty. So I have to wash all of my socks again. I'm running out again. So I'm going to be I'm going to be doing a load of socks very soon, but I wanted to actually waited to do my socks until I finally recorded the podcast because then I knew that these would be wet, but I could have shed them wet and then they would have been clean, but wet, but we've got dry and dirty. You guys will forgive me. All right. So that is all that I have time for right now. I actually have a half finished object to show you guys. So I will pick up with that. That kind of goes into whips. So maybe we'll just, we'll go into whips when I come back later and I'll just, I'll start with the half finished object, which is my husband's sock. And we can talk about that. And then I have a new cast on and I have spinning. I have acquisitions. You guys, I think that this is going to be a really long one based on how chatty I am today. So I do, I'm just telling you, I have to be in the right mood to film and I am in the right mood today, but I didn't start early enough. And so I have to do it in, in segments. So it will be dark when I come back, but we will, we will continue. And I hope that you will join me in a little bit, which will be in like two seconds for you guys, but like seven or eight hours for me, six, six or seven, I don't know, a bunch of hours for me. So I'll see you guys later. Until then, take care. Hey everyone. Okay, so that was a much longer break than I anticipated. I thought I was going to come back to record yesterday evening after Owen went to sleep, but it turned out I was beyond exhausted myself and I went to bed quite early for me, like 9.30 last night. Pretty much after I got Owen in bed, I was falling asleep reading to him and I said, I think I should probably just wait until tomorrow to finish recording the podcast. So that means we at least have some daylight again instead of the nighttime fake lights. So that's good. Okay, so let's continue with the widths that I have been working on. So one of the main projects that I have been focusing on getting to the next step each month is my Twists and Turns shawl by Stephen West. So this is the, this was the Mystery Knit Along from this past October, 2022. And last month I had gone and finished up Clue 2, which was those light colored cable bits on both ends of the shawl. It was also clue two was, was this whole section here. So I guess we should recap. Clue one was this center section here. And it was really, really, really cool to do. Actually the process of knitting that part, I'm not gonna lie, that was super tedious, but the end result is, is so cool with those braided braided cabled sections down. I don't even know what to call them, but yeah. So that was really fun, um, the result, not the process. And then clue two was continuing on, you know, both ends of that center section and doing these short row sections there and the cable section. And now I am working on clue three, which is this bit here, but I actually finished this entire 
strip, which is going to be kind of difficult to show because it is curling up on itself right now. But um, oh, it's basically this really, really long strip that kind of reminds me of a cardigan belt tie section and I'm not even sure that you can see very well. Oh, there we go. If I hold it, aha. Uh -huh. All right, if I hold it toward the window there, then the light shines on it and you can see the squiggle. Basically, it's like a little snake of of cable stitches that go in like an S shape that squiggle all the way all the way down. So, um, yeah, I messed up, actually, especially at the end right here. I have an extra cabled bump here that I'm not supposed to have. I'm trying to decide if I want to take this out and redo it now that I am getting a better hang for doing the twisted stitch cables without a cable needle. So this is the first time, I'm trying to, it's really hard to show this. This is the first time that I am working cables without a cable needle and I'm finally really getting the hang of it, but it's super tricky because this is a super wash yarn and I'm using metal needles. So the, the whole situation is very slippery. So in that first strip, there are definitely plenty of times where I dropped my stitch and didn't necessarily pick things up correctly. And so I'm trying to decide how noticeable it's going to be. Like if I'm happy enough to just leave it and have the result of that, if it looks good enough, just be like, a, this is when I was learning and I can look back on it and reflect upon my very first experience with out using a cable needle or if I'm going to take all the practice that I got and want to make it a little bit more perfect and polished looking to appeal to the perfectionist side of my personality. I am a Virgo. So yeah, I haven't decided yet. Um, but basically the other day I started the mirror image portion. And so I did one of the three and a half pattern repeats on side two. So my goal is to get through the rest of clue three before the end of March, which means I've got two more days. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Um, it's okay if it doesn't. If I, if I don't make that goal, it's okay. I got so involved with fixing this sweater that this, even though this was something that I had technically finished a couple of times in February, definitely carried on into March. And I just really wanted to get it done and I wanted to get this sweater done right. So I focused on it so that my March goals kind of got a little bit delayed. So that's okay. Um, so yeah, my twists and turns, it's, it's coming. It will eventually get done. I love the yarn. Um, the yarn is from Wonderland Yarns, and let's see, I'll show you what they look like in the skeins. So obviously this bright purple, this fuchsia, that is my favorite color. It is called Contrariwise, and let me see, it is number 28, and I am using the Mary Ann base which is their fingering weight sock yarn. And it's got a lot of yardage. It's, I think it's a light fingering weight. It is 475 yards, 85% fine superwash merino and 15% nylon. So that's the base I'm using for this shawl. And then my other colors are Tulgy Wood, which is this gorgeous deep brown. And that is number 25. And then this gorgeous contrasting color, um, 
love this one so much. This one is called Toadstool and it is so beautiful. This is one of their newer, newer colors from this past fall. And Toadstool is number 350. So those are the yarns I am using. I should say that this yarn for this shawl was provided for me, provided to me from Wonderland Yarns. I am a brand ambassador for them. So I have a discount code that you guys can use for any of your purchases on the Wonderland Yarns website. You can use the code YARNVIP and save 15% on your yarn and fiber order. Okay, so that's the first whip that I have been working on and I'm going to move over to the next one. So another one of my long-standing whips is my All of the Lights cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. This is actually the whip that has been on my needles the longest. It has been cast on in March, no, in May 2020. I purchased the yarn for it in March 2020, right before the pandemic. So I cast this on in May 2020, and I think that I've, I've done a little bit of work on this since my last podcast, but not that much, and I will tell you why in a minute. So here, this is what I've got right now, and, I think, I think I've only done, since the last podcast, another half of a repeat. It's so gorgeous, but I'm gonna go close in on the, what, I don't know if you call it the neck band or there's, it's not a button band because there's no buttons on this cardigan, but if there were, it would be the button band. So I guess we could kind of call it the button band. But I realized that I have messed up the cable. So let me come really in close so I can show you guys my mistake. So basically this first section here is a very simple cable. You can see I missed, I missed twisted it up here. I did the opposite. I I don't know which side is supposed to be which direction. Um, and I think what keeps happening is that I keep getting confused because the pattern is so detailed, um, but I'm just repeating basically two rows over and over. And I keep getting confused which cable, whether it's A or B, I am supposed to be doing on this side versus on this side. And it's knit flat, so, um, so I'm doing the wrong side and the right side and the wrong side and the right side. So I think what keeps happening, uh, I'm just trying to get, here we go, is that I keep mixing up which cable I'm supposed to be doing and then I twist in the wrong direction because I'm doing the wrong cable. So after spending all of this time working so hard on my Feel the Burn sweater, I, I kind of put this away and I decided that I want to fix it. <laughs> And I'm obviously not going to rip back and start this over because this has been a ton of work and the majority of this looks really, really beautiful. But it's a very complex pattern. And the only mistake that I have made is just in this button band section with the direction of twisting the cable. I knew that I had done it right at the start and a viewer had pointed it out to me long ago. And I was okay with that mistake because it just, it sat on the shoulder and I didn't think it was gonna be super noticeable. But as I have continued on with the pattern, I have just realized how many times I make the mistake and I don't think I'm gonna be happy with it in the end. So <laughs> I am going to do something that I've never done before and I am going to figure out 
how to fix cables that are twisted the wrong direction. I know that, um, what is her name? Is it so, it's something like Roxanne Richardson. There's a really nice tutorial. There's, there's plenty of people that have tutorials on how to do it. I, the one that I saw that looks really simple is where you just drop down in that section and you catch all your stitches and basically you are dropping all the way down to the point where you made the mistake and you are then retwisting the cable in the proper direction and then just re-knitting all the way up back to the cable needle. So you're not taking out the whole entire thing, mainly just the cable part itself, which it's a little bit scary because if I mess it up, then I'm gonna kind of have to redo the entire cardigan. But I think I can do it. I think that there's also another method where, um, say you've like knit the whole sweater and you realize that way back you made a mistake. I think that you can also cut and redo the cable portion as well, but I don't think I wanna go that route if I can avoid it. But I am gonna have to rip back these cables quite far because of how many times I have made the mistake. So yeah, so I kind of, once I realized that I was going to want to fix it, I decided not, obviously not to continue with it. And I just set it aside and I just focused on some other things. I wanted to talk about it on the podcast before I continued and took it apart and tried to, tried to make sense of what it is that I need to do to get back on track with the cables twisted in the correct direction. So that's kind of what's going on with my all the lights right now is that I made a consistent mistake on both sides of the cardigan in a pretty obvious spot that's going to irk me if I don't go back and fix it. So now I have to figure out how to fix my cables. And I really don't want to rip my whole sweater out and start again. So we're going to, we are taking steps to become a better knitter. That's what we are doing right now. So I feel like I made some great strides in my knitting with this sweater. I cut my sweater for the very first time and now I am going to learn how to fix cables that are twisted the wrong direction. Wish me luck, but that is the current status of my All The Lights cardigan. Um, the yarn that I am using for this is the Colorways Yellow Jacket and it is Ba Yarns, and it is their DK Sonoma base, and it is just this gorgeous grello with lots of beautiful speckles in it. Okay, so I think we can move on to Knitworthy, because I have a couple of whips that I have been working on for my husband and for my son. So I have the most gigantic sock in the entire universe, unless you're knitting for like Shaquille O'Neal, which I'm sure, I wonder if anybody has knit socks for Shaquille O'Neal. That would be a huge commitment, but basically this feels like it. <laughs> My husband has size 12 feet and I have a half finished object. I finally finished his uh, sock, which I'm using the checklist of birds pattern, which goes with the special checklist of birds yarn from Gage Dye Works. And so, wow. oh, Sammy, kitty cat. Wow. So it didn't take me long to figure out that I was not going to have enough yarn to knit my husband two socks from one skein of the Gage Dye Works yarn. So Gage Tire Works actually does make six ounce skeins, which is 150 grams, which would be enough for two socks for huge feet. But for some reason in the Checklist of Birds collaboration, from what I can tell, they only offered the 100 gram skeins. So 
luckily for me, I was able to go back on their website. The collections that they do don't stick around forever. And a lot of the colorways from the checklist of birds had already sold out, but they still had some, this is the great blue heron colorway. And I wanted to show you what it looks like in the actual skein because I don't think I was ever able to do that because they dye their yarn in such a unique way where, and it's actually, it's hard to tell in the skein, but there are the self-striping colors and then you can see all of those beige strands there. So all of the beige is for the contrasting heels and toes. And then the self-striping colors only are about half of the skein. So it's just, it's a really unique way of dyeing where basically when you wind the yarn into a cake, the center of that center pull ball will be the side that you pull from to do the contrasting cuffs, heels, and toes. And the outside of the skein will be for the stripes. So I had just never seen that done before. This is my first time working with Gage Dye Works yarn. And I have more that I will show you when we go to our acquisitions section because I had to order this from Canada. And so I went ahead and ordered a few things while I was at it so that I could make better use of the shipping cost. But anyway, so I have now a complete sock at a, a length for trouser length socks as my husband prefers. This thing is ginormous. I feel like it could almost be a Christmas stocking, but it's just not wide enough to hold a lot of big things, but it's still, it's a huge sock. Um, so I will show you, um, there is a pearl bump pattern that happens every light blue stripe. So the light blue stripes are twice as thick. And for some reason, like the, the pearl bump pattern has to do with like the frequency of how often great blue herons appear in, I think it's Victoria, Canada, in the different months throughout the year. I, yeah, I don't, I don't quite get it, but there, there's a specific amount of pearl bumps <laughs> for each of the different bird colorways that they released. So I made a mistake and I also did the pearl bumps on the bottom, on the bottom of the foot. And hopefully my husband will wear them and not be able to feel those too much, but I'm not about to redo it because <laughs> they're huge. Um, the back of, this is the first time I've ever done this, the back of the sock is you continue the pattern of the pearl bump stripes all the way up the front part of the sock, but then the back is completely done in a one by one rib to give more stretch for the sock, which I think is perfect for my husband because he's got kind of like wide legs. So um, yeah, it just, it's much more stretchy. And then I know that it doesn't look the nicest. I did a loose bind off at the uh, cuff of the sock. So these were my first toe up socks. So usually I cast on and knit bottom down, uh, cuff to, to toe, but I did toe up for the first time. And so this is the first sock that I've ever bound off. And it doesn't look very neat, but I did a stretchy bind off because I figured I wanted to make sure that my husband was going to have socks that fit over his calves and stuff really nicely. And when it's stretched out like that, it looks just fine. So these are finally um, half done. I still have one sock to knit, but now I have the yarn to do it. So that is the status of my husband's socks. And I have a knit that I've been working on a little bit here and there for Owen as well. So 
Owen has outgrown basically everything I have knit him. You already know that I am working on more socks for him because his feet have grown several sizes, but he has also outgrown all of his sweaters. It's been, I think it's been at least two years since I have completed a sweater for him. So he is in need of another sweater and I started the flax pattern by Tin Can Knits for Owen's next sweater. I have decided to knit the eight to 10 size for kids, which is their largest kid size before it moves on into the adult sizes. So my choices for his size were six to eight or eight to 10. He's eight years old now. He's on the small side, but um, I decided that I would rather it be too big and he can grow into it if it doesn't fit him right away, then maybe it fits now, but he's just gonna grow very soon. And then I've got a sweater that he didn't get to wear very much. So I just decided to go with the bigger size so that he would eventually be able to wear it for hopefully at least two years. So we'll see. But the yarn that I'm using is Spin Cycle's new yarn called Trine. And the colorway I chose for him, obviously, is the orange and blue one because, as I mentioned earlier, those are his favorite colors. So when I saw this yarn, I said, yep, that's what I need to get for Owen's next sweater. Um, so this is a non-superwash yarn, and the colorway they did in just numbers, and so the colorway for this one is 29 degrees. And this is what the trine label looks like. So last time I had shown you a swatch that I did. So I'm just, I'm gonna show the swatch one more time because I think what I have so far, it's gonna be a little tricky to show you what I've got. Um, so this is the swatch that I did. I tried two needle sizes and I don't remember, I don't remember, I think I tried an eight and a seven because I think it was an eight recommended in the pattern, but seven is what I am using for his sweater, I think, right? Yeah, US seven. And I am not quite done with the yoke yet. Me, it's kind of hard to show what I have so far, but basically, I have finished all the increases for the yoke, and I had started uh, just knitting to finish the yoke, uh, repeating the same two rounds until I reach a certain length. And I'm not there yet, just because this project I haven't picked up in a while. But the cast on option that I chose for his sweater was to cast on starting beneath the neckband because I think that I might want to knit the neckband in a contrasting color, either orange or blue. So I wanted to have that option later. And I think it'll be a little bit more structurally sound when you pick up and knit the neckband last. So this is what the garter stitch looks like in the trine. So I think it's going to be a really, really fun sweater. I love the fabric. The yarn is really soft. I know a lot of people have been wondering like non superwash spin psycho. What does this yarn feel like? It is super soft. I don't think that there's going to be any issues with it being a comfortable sweater for Owen to wear. He'll probably wear a t-shirt under it anyway, because that's what he usually does. But yeah, so I'm planning to, now that I have my sweater done, I'm planning to get back to this. I'm not really in a hurry to get it done because we are turning to spring right now. And so I feel like I'm gonna kind of just work on this on and off and hope to have it ready for the early fall. And if it's not ridiculously big on him, then maybe he can wear it for his school pictures for his, oh my gosh, he's gonna be in fourth grade next year. That sounds so grown up to me. Um, yeah, so hopefully by the fall, he will have a new sweater and we'll see how big it is on him then. But I might not show this every week because I don't know that I'm gonna be working on it like every single week. So 
I will just keep updating you guys on this one when I have made a decent amount of progress. Okay, so I have a brand new cast on that I am eager to share with you guys. So let's go to casting on. So I did some stash diving this past week or maybe two weeks ago, I think, maybe by now. And I have had some yarn in my stash for a very long time. I know a lot of times when people say a very long time, they're like, it's been in my stash for like four years. No, this has been in my stash for as long as those socks that I made Owen. I got this when I when Bryce and I moved back to New York um, for my doctorate in 2012, because I got this on Long Island like that first year. I yeah, so from 2012, a yarn shop that does not exist anymore, sadly. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but I got this Cascade Yarns Eco Duo, and this is a natural, naturally colored wool and alpaca blend. I think it's a 50-50 blend. Let me see. Um, no, it is 70% undyed baby alpaca, 30% undyed merino wool. And so this is 197 yards per 100 grams ball. And so the colorway of this one is color 1706. So it's this gorgeous, I think the gray almost looks light blue, but it is so pretty. And I have had this in my stash, I have, I think about 900 and something yards of it. So not, I didn't, I didn't think I had enough to knit a sweater. When I bought this, I was not yet a sweater knitter, but I think I bought it with the intention of maybe making a scarf for my mom or something. I don't know, it never happened. I have this colorway, I have a few skeins of um, like a regular cream colorway and like their most natural bare color and then I also have a white and black color that's their zebra colorway which I had started making a sweater out of that one so many years ago when I was the smallest size I had started knitting this cardigan and yeah it was coming out great I think I did like the whole back side of the cardigan but it sat for so many years and I am no longer an extra small. So yeah, that's one of those UFOs that is going to get ripped out. Um, I have a plan actually for that yarn as well because I saw one person. So what I did, let me just tell you guys what I did first of all. Um, all right, this has come undone. That's okay, I can re, re that up. So what I did was I went to Ravelry and I searched for the yarn first. And then what I did was I searched through the projects that people have knit with this yarn. And because it's such an old yarn, um, so many people's projects were from like so many years ago, <laughs> like, you know, the 2012, 2013, 2014, you know, a decade ago, basically. And let's just say style has changed since then. And those projects, you know, those types of sweaters, I wasn't interested in knitting. But so in the more recently completed projects, people that must have just had this sitting in their stash for a decade, like I have, one person had knit Hush which is a new paid for sweater by Tin Can Knits. Speaking of Tin Can Knits, so I'm knitting the flax sweater for Owen, which is a free pattern. And I have started Hush from Tin Can Knits and I have the perfect amount of yarn, which is pretty much just under a thousand yards to knit this sweater. And I was eager to cast it on right away. Basically in the pattern it says, 
If you enjoyed knitting the Love Note sweater, which so many people have knit, you'll love knitting Hush. And so not that many people have knit this yet. I think it just came out earlier this fall, like so this past fall. And I'll insert a picture, but I have the entire yoke done. So it's got this really beautiful cable pattern. And it's basically, I think, like a DK yarn combined with a um, mohair yarn, like a lace weight, lace weight mohair. But I saw somebody had knit this sweater and this alpaca is, so this is like a worsted to Aran weight yarn, but it gives that same really soft halo that you would get by combining the mohair with a regular yarn. So I thought it was just, it's perfect and it's coming out really nicely. So this yarn does kind of self stripe a little bit. Um, just, I don't, I think you can see, especially if I hold up maybe the back where I did the short rows, you can see how, how it stripes. And I just think that in this pattern with the cables, it just looks really, really, really nice together. And so that's what I cast on. And I think um, I've already split for the sleeves. I think I'm going to be able to get through the rest of the sweater very quickly now because it's just going to be my mindless stuck in a project. And it's an Aran weight yarn, so I think it's going to go by pretty quickly. But I am excited to finally be knitting this yarn that has been in my stash for a full decade. I'm pretty proud of myself. So it's always nice when you finally, finally find a pattern that the yarn wants to be. And yeah, so, so I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, the other sweater that I'm going to knit with the rest of the yarn, the zebra yarn and my natural yarn combined, I saw another person had knit Caitlin Hunter's Koi Vua. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll put it on the screen. Um, but the way that the yarns combined with each other looked really great in that sweater. And I think I have the correct amount of, oh Sam, of both, um, of both of those different yarns to combine them together and to create Caitlin Hunter's Koi Vua sweater. So I think that is what I'm going to do with that yarn. I don't know if that'll happen before maybe the fall because we are getting into warmer weather now, but I'm excited to have already thought of a purpose for that yarn finally, because I knew I couldn't continue knitting the cardigan that I had already started um, because it was a couple sizes smaller than what I currently am now, but yeah, I have a purpose for it and I'm really excited to be knitting from my deep dark stash. <laughs> okay, so that's everything I am currently knitting on. I have some acquisitions to share with you, but I also have a little bit of spinning that I would like to share with you as well. So let's go over to spinning. So the February Paradise Fibers, Fiber Club, this is gorgeous gorgeous fiber. This is 54% merino wool. It is 40% kid mohair and it is 6% blue stellina. It is so soft. It is so beautiful. So I have spun my first single with it. And so I will be plying this with another single, but I just wanted to show you my very, very first single. So I'm very excited about it. I have been spinning this on my very favorite spindle, which don't ask me what it is. I got it at Maryland Sheep and Wool one year. And at that time I, I paid no attention to things as things such as spindle makers or anything and it doesn't actually say anywhere on it 
It's gorgeous though. That's the bottom of it. I love this spindle so much. I basically spin almost everything on this spindle. But so I have actually, they sent six ounces. So what I did was I split it into four bumps and I have completely spun through one of the four bumps and I'm looking forward to starting on the second one this week. So that is my current spinning project. It'll be a pretty short segment, but I wanted to share with you the March Fiber Club package because it's gonna be an art yarn and I'm really excited to start spinning this one. So. I think I will start spinning that this week as well. So let me get that out so I can show you what that is going to be. So for the March Paradise Fibers Club, I received, whoops, there we go. I received this gorgeousness. So this is a Coriadale fiber that was dyed black. So it's not a natural black at all, but it is very, very black. And the fiber is Corydell. So I have three ounces of this. And then Compass Moon Creations is a maker on Etsy. And we got all of these jewel tones. You guys know me and my jewel tones. Um, mohair and wool dyed locks. So I am going to take my beginner spindle and I am going to start creating, I think this is not really focusing, is it? There we go. And I'm gonna start creating an art yarn with this. So I'm really excited to start spinning this one. Um, they, they gave some ideas for the projects that you could knit with this. Um, so basically they spun it into an art yarn that looked kind of like that. And I shared all of this in my unboxing video, but I know a lot of you, many of you don't watch that. So I wanted to share it here too. And what they did was they combined it with some other yarns then into a weaving project using, um, the Paradise Fibers Frame Loom and some linen warp. I know nothing about weaving, but look at how cool this looks. So they combined it with a whole bunch of other yarns to get that effect. And so I won't be doing that because I don't, I'm not a weaver yet. I don't need another hobby, I don't think right now, but I am excited to create an art yarn with that and have something a little bit different to spin up and work on. So that is my spinning for this week. Now we can move on to acquisitions. Okay, so I already let you guys know that I did some shopping at Gage Dye Works because I needed to order another skein of that sock yarn for my husband's socks. So I also bought these beautiful skeins from Gage Dye Works, and I wanted to share what I'm planning to knit out of these. So, um, I already said that Gage Dye Works also makes um, 150 gram skeins, and so I was able to get this colorway, which is called Our Solar System Round Trip, and I will um, include a picture of the socks that I am going to make for Bryce, for my husband, with this yarn. The colors I know look all kinds of girly and stuff, but um, it actually is just really colorful and really nice. The really nice colors, and I showed them to Bryce and he likes them, so these are gonna be really fun to knit up. The Solar System collaboration that they did is most of it is sold out now. This was one that they had done a while ago, but they still had this available. And so I snagged this because I should be able to get two socks out of a 150 gram skein. So we'll see if that works out. Um, but yeah, they the way that Gage Dye Works does their patterning for the stripes, it 
for the solar system, it, it has to do with the planets, and yeah, you can read about it on their website. I don't remember enough to actually share it in any kind of accurate way here right now. But I'm sure once I start knitting these, I will review it and then tell you about it when I'm actually working on them. So yeah, this is, it's just called Merino Twist Fingering. It's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Oh, it's actually 170 grams, so it's six ounces. And it's 655 yards. So this should be enough to get two socks for my husband. So that was the first thing that I picked up was the solar system yarn that over there and then I knew that I wanted to pick up this is one of their newest yarn collections it's called wildflower fade and I also got the round trip one basically the round trip is so that you can make two identical socks and their one way trip is basically a fade just from like one end to the other that won't repeat. So like if you wanted to make a hat or a shawl or something and didn't need like two socks to match exactly or two sleeves for a sweater or something like that. So these are my colors. So, so pretty. They had uh, all of the different colors available in their own full length skeins too so that you could fade like a much larger garment but I thought just a pair of socks would be really nice. And so this is just one of their, it's their classic, which is their sock. It's 115 grams, which is four ounces. And it's also their Merino twist fingering. So the same as the other socks. So these will be socks for me. And then I have had my eye on these colorways for quite some time. Um, basically, this is kind of the same colorway. They have different names because one of them has more... Okay, I need to back up. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the shawl. Okay, so the shawl is this bigger skein. So this is one of their um, six ounce right? Yeah, this is six ounces, but this is their shawl. So they dye up their yarn differently for if you're going to knit socks, which I have in this one, which is their classic, and their shawls because of the way the stripes are. So when you're knitting socks, which is going to be this one, the stripes are equally distributed in the way that they're dyed on the skein because they don't need to be the same width all the way around. Um, so this colorway is their Concrete Remix and I have wanted this for forever. So this is gonna be socks. And then let me explain how this works. So I will insert some pictures so that you can see. Um, all right, so when you're knitting like a triangular shawl, and you want, what they wanted to do was create basically a self-striping yarn that you could just mindlessly knit and have a big shawl come out so that the, the colors of the stripes would be equal widths and lengths. So you've got, at the beginning of the shawl, you just have small stripes and then the stripes get bigger, which means if you want to do it all in one skein, the lengths that they dye the colors have to change in order to have enough yarn to get an exact same width for the longer stripes as for the shorter stripes. So it's, it's really brilliant the way they've done it. There's a couple of specific patterns that they suggest that will work with this yarn. So I will figure out which shawl I want to make, but this basically is the opposite colorway. It's the same colors, but from the opposite direction. This one is concrete and tulips. So concrete and tulips and concrete remix basically are the same colors, but one of them, the stripes that get really long are more, I don't remember which one this is, if it's like the, I think it's like the red and orange and yellow 
stripes will be like the the bigger focus of the shawl whereas like the purples and greens and blues will be in the shorter stripe sections and then the other colorway does the opposite so that like the shorter stripes are the reds oranges and yellows and the longer ones are the greens blues and purples I don't know if that's making any sense the way that I am explaining it but yeah and I don't remember which skein does which thing all I know is that it was only available, the shawl quantity was only available in the one color and the sock quantity was only available in the opposite color. So I just got what was available. So yeah, I've been wanting to try this colorway out for a really long time. So that's what I'm going to make with all of this Gage Dye Works yarn. Okay, so that is all the yarny acquisitions I have. And then I picked up a couple of books. So... I'm sure that probably everybody is aware of Amy from La Bien Amie, Amy Gilles, her neons and neutrals pattern collection has come out in book form. And so I also picked up Worsted because I had never gotten her Worsted book before. So um, I got these from Brooklyn General because it's very close to me and they came very quickly. And I am really excited about neons and neutrals. I have one sweater that I definitely am going to want to cast on and I'll get into that in a second. Um, and then Worsted, I thought would be just really nice to have in my collection as well. So this had been sold out at Brooklyn at Brooklyn General for quite some time but when she was stocking neons and neutrals she did a like a restock of this book as well so I went ahead and ordered those both at the same time um let me flip to the pattern that I want to knit and basically I have the yarn for it already it's this one here so it's this sweater I don't remember the name of it but let me find a actual pattern. That's just a photo in the beginning of the book. It's gorgeous. Um, here's another. Oh, it's called Darta. So here's uh, two different versions of it. Probably I'll knit the, the cropped one, which I think is a really nice shape. I like it better than the longer shape. Um, but those ruffles, so here's a good picture of the ruffles in it. I already have the mohair in the same brand, not the same colorway, for the ruffles. And so my effervescent, which I'm going to be returning to uh, this month in April, because it's almost April. I started it last April and I'm like almost done with the body portion of it before the yoke you only need a little bit of the mohair for the ruffle. So I have this whole skein of um, mohair from the wandering flock and I'm gonna have so much of it left over. And so in this pattern, again, it's like just ruffles going this way with the, the same exact brand of mohair. So I am going to use that mohair for this sweater. I have no idea what neutral I'm going to pair it with, but that's the first thing I'm going to make from this book. So um, yeah, you guys can view the patterns for both of these books on Ravelry if you haven't seen them already, but the, the books, Lina does such an amazing job with the photography in the books and there are these nice linen covers. And so these are just really, really nice to have. I don't really have any room on my bookshelves to put them right now, but yeah. Anyway, that is everything that I have to share with you today. Wow, that was a super long episode. I don't even know how long it was since I recorded a good chunk of it yesterday, but I know that I've been recording for a while today, so I'm quite sure this is going to be probably like an hour and a half. I don't know. We'll see. So if you have stuck around to the end, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, I would really love if you could hit that subscribe button. I 
would like to see that number get close to 3,000 so that I can do another giveaway. So if that's any incentive for you guys to subscribe, if you haven't, then please do. And I really most of all love receiving comments from all of you and engaging with you and getting to know you through those comments. So that is one of my favorite things. It, it just is such a cheerful, Thing when you get that comment notification that oh wow somebody actually has some feedback for me on my podcast and that yeah it's just such a great feeling and I absolutely love receiving comments from you so I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will hopefully be back not too long from now with the next one until then take care bye bye <laughs>